فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The topic inshallah ta'ala that I'm going to be speaking about today is feminism in Islam, right? What is feminism in Islam? And how does Islam observe feminism? I'm not going to speak about the term and what it means and its origins and the history of it. That's something else. But inshallah ta'ala, and I also don't want to look at it from a very detailed criticism, a very detailed uh, critical analysis of it. That's also another time inshallah ta'ala for it. But what I do want to do inshallah ta'ala is I want to place some usul, principles. And I want the people who are inshallah ta'ala in the field of da'wah, who are dealing with these issues, youngsters and youths who are finding it hard, uh, wanting to know more about the issue of feminism, are also those who are actually, who are and call themselves feminists, that they are able to inshallah ta'ala listen to these lectures and these talks, or this particular talk, and take some understanding what Islam thinks of feminists and how to deal with it, inshallah ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us. He is the one who brought us into this world. And when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala created us, He did not consult us. He didn't take our permission and did not say to any one of us, do you want to be a male or a female? Rather, it was something He chose he did it according to how he wanted it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we had no uh, consultation or we weren't consulted regarding it. Allah says in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ وَرَبُّكَ your Lord يَخْلُقُ He creates. Allah is the one who creates. وَيَخْتَارَ and He chooses. Pay attention here, my sisters and my brothers and sisters. Because these are foundations and principles that I'm going to give you, insha'Allah ta'ala. وَرَبُّكَ your Lord يَخْلُقُ is the one who creates. وَيَخْتَارَ and he's the one who chooses. What is it that he chooses? He chooses who he wants to make a male. And he also chooses who he wants to make a female. Then Allah after that says to you, مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةِ You had no choice. You have no choice regarding which uh, your gender is going to be. Allah chooses that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanah, exalted is he. Wa ta'ala, and high is he. Amma yushrikuna, that which they associate with him. Also Allah says in another ayah, Subhanal ladhi khalaq al-azwaj, exalted is the one who created al-azwaj. Azwaj means partners. What does it mean partners? Male and female, that's what Allah means. The Mufassirun, they say, Exalted is Allah, the one who created male and female. كُلَّهَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ وَمِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Exalted is He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created al-azwaj. He created uh, different pairs, pairs. You see, different types of animals, two pairs of animals. He also created, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nabatat, the, the agriculture and the crops that come up from the earth. He created them in different, you see. Also, وَمِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ And from yourselves. Hawa and Adam. Allah created Adam and then He created Hawa for Adam. Adam, Allah created Hawa for Adam. Now that we've understood the first point that I wanted to mention, which is, Allah created you. Allah Taala did not also take your permission in what gender you are going to be. Is that all something we agree upon? Is that something we accept? That Allah is the one who created us? Now this takes us to the second point, which is the one who created us, the one who brought us into this earth, the one who placed us here, who didn't consult us, he is also the one who legislated for us. He's the one who legislated. And that legislation is in accordance to our creation. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn and I did not also create the ins except to worship me. That's why you were brought to this earth. 
male and female, <coughs> were brought to this earth to worship who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for males is in a particular way. And for females is in a particular way. And there are also some acts of worships which they both have in common. So we, we can divide the ibadat for, based on the genders into two types. Ibadat which are amma, generic, general ibadat worships that male and female have to come with. And they are the same in, such as salah, such as zakat, such as psalm, such as hajj. All of us have to do that. We're all the same in that. No differences. Okay? And there are acts of worship which are unique for each spouse, uh, each individual. Each individual, male and female. For example, male have to come with jihad fi sabilillah. Women don't have to do that. It's not upon them. It's sahih. And ahkam which Allah ta'ala made obligatory on the woman to come with. For example, the woman has to what? She has to, for example, uh, she has to... Uh, or ahkam that Allah made for her. For instance, she needs the prayer when she's on her menstruation. The Sharia told her, you can't pray. When the Salah, when you're on this particular time, you're not going to pray. You're not going to pray. At this particular time, you are not going to? You're not going to pray. And praying is not obligatory on you. So the things that we have to understand here now is, we, we, we're not just trying to take ayat and hadith and not understand what it's about, okay? We want to understand something. I just now told you, that Allah created you and you weren't consulted. Sahih? You weren't. Allah told you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're a dhikr, you're a muntha. Was any one of us consulted whether what gender we're going to be? We, we found out that we're a male now. When we, when we, when we grew up, oh, okay, I'm a male, okay, and you're a female. No one consulted you and you have no choice in it. Good. Then Allah wa ta'ala tells us that after having created you, I also set with you legislations and rules and regulations you have to follow. We also took that these rules and regulations are in accordance to our genders. It observes us as individuals. Men are told to do things and women are told to do things. And there are also things that which they both have to come together with. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? That is something we have to understand. Because if it happens that those two things are not realized, a lot of mafasid, harm may come out of it. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now I want to tell you something. And now I want to mention another point, which is the ahkam, the rulings that have been sent onto us are based on two things, inshaAllah ta'ala. Based on two things. Are you with me, brothers and, sisters, brothers and sisters? The first one, what did I just say? Allah, Allah created you. Allah brought you to this earth. He legislated again after bringing you to this earth. He legislated in accordance to what he, Allah wa ta'ala, Wanted. The, uh, the, the khalq you're creating, you have no choice. The ahkam, you also have no choice. It's based on what he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least, isn't that the case? But the ahkam of Allah, the ahkam of Allah is based upon two things. The first one is based on adil, justice. Allah says in the Quran, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا The speech of your Lord, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's speech is full of what? Sidqan, it's truthful. Truthful in everything that he told us, the stories that he's told us, the information that he's given us are accurate, 100%. وَعَدْلًا and it is also just. Are you with me brothers and sisters? Allah's ahkam are what? Adl, justice. So when Allah legislated men to do jihad, this is adil. Men can't come and say, oh, why is that not unfair? That's unfair? Why is it that the women are not doing it with us? And then men come out and they, yeah, they, they make a group of organization and they fight for men's rights because the Quran has unjustly oppressed them. Sah? Pay attention here. Allah did it because he created you and he knows what you can do and you can't is justice. And the khalq, pay attention, the khalq, and the sharia are in correlation, they are in agreement. Are you with me? وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا The second thing that the, peop the person has to realize is what, brothers? Is that, that it's all done with knowledge. Allah knows your affairs better than you do. 
Like when people say to you, Akhi, this, for example, I don't know why, why I have to do this. You don't understand it, but Allah knows it better than you do. Look what Allah said in the Quran. What did he say? أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ الْلَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ يَعْلَمُ Does he not know? Allah wa ta'ala is saying. مَنْ خَلَقَ The one who created his creation. Does he not, his, does he not know his creation? وَهُوَ الْلَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ And Allah is the khabir. The one whose knowledge is detailed. Sahih? Also in another ayah Allah wa ta'ala says to them قُلْ أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُ أَمِ اللَّهِ are you the, are you, do, do you guys know more or does Allah know more? Do you know more or does Allah know more? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows more than you. Because you know why? Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala what has happened. Allah knows what's happening. Allah knows what's going, going to happen. And Allah even knows what hasn't happened. If it was to happen, how it would have happened. That's Allah's knowledge. So when Allah is giving a, a hukum, a ruling, He's doing it with knowledge. Ilm. He's not just giving that ruling because Allah just wanted to give the ruling. It's all based on knowledge and wisdom. Sahih. And it is also done with justice. Adil. Also Allah Taala says in the Quran, لكن الله يشهد بما أنزل إليك أنزله بعلم والملائكة يشهدون وكفى بالله شهدا. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He testifies that this Quran was sent to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with what? بعلمه with his knowledge. Allah said, I did all of that with my knowledge. Now that we've understood that, my beloved brothers and sisters, what have we understood? We've understood Allah has created us. And He didn't take our opinions, our decisions and our choices into place, into consideration. He did it because He wanted to do it. He did it with how He felt, Allah Tabarak, and how He wanted to. And then when he brought you into this existence, Allah wa ta'ala placed ahkam, rulings over you. Those rulings are based on adil and ilm. We know that. For men, all the ahkam that we have in the Quran and the Sunnah we find is all adil. All of the ahkam that the females find in the Quran and the Sunnah is based on what? Adil. Sahih? Now that we found out that, what is upon us? And what is it that if we go against the ahkam, what harm would it cause us? This is one point we need to go. But before I mention this, before I mention this, and I don't want to forget, inshallah ta'ala, is I want to mention the relationship between al-khalqu, which I, I spoke about at the beginning, and then after that I spoke about wal ahkam and the ahkam. So the al-khalqu, the creating, and the rulings that they are always together. I want to give you one example, and then inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to move on to the point that I mentioned, which is, Iblis alayhi la'a'inullah, may Allah's consistent curse be upon him. Look what he did. He realized something. What did he realize? He realized that he can interfere with a matter. Iblis was taken out of Jannah for a reason. Why was Iblis taken out of Jannah? What was the particular reason why Iblis was taken out of Jannah? He was told to prostrate to who? Adam alayhi salam. Iblis was told, go and prostrate to Adam. Are you with me? What did Iblis do? He refused. What did Iblis compare? What, did he, what was the reason he refused? Ana khayru minhu. Khalaqtani, he said. Min narin wa khalaqtahu. So he was belittled in the creation of who? Adam alayhi salam. My creation is better than his creating. I was created from something better than the, that which Adam alayhi salam was created from. So the reason was what? So who, his hate towards Adam, is it anything with the personality of Adam? Because Adam is still not created yet. Are you with me? It's nothing to do with Adam's attributes yet or things that he's going to do. It's khalq, the creating and the essence of Adam is what he dislikes. So what did Iblis do? Alayhi Allah, Brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. What Iblis did was, he came to Adam afterwards he was created. Allah says to us in the Quran, فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ Iblis came to them and he lied to them and he deceived them. Allah says, He placed them in deception and he fooled them. He showed them a mirage, something they thought wasn't what it was going to be. He says, are you looking for... Uh, are you looking for a creation, that, a kingdom that doesn't go and you want to live for the rest of your life? Is that what you wanted? And Adam said, Adam was like, yeah, why? who wouldn't want like that? Sah. And then what did he do after that? 
He told him, eat from the tree that Allah told him not to eat. Look what happened, pay attention. Allah says, فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ سَوْ فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَطَفِقَا يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ وَعَصَى وَنَادَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْهَكُمَا عَنْكُمْ تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةِ هي الله توزى سبحانه وتعالى فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ when they when Adam and Hawa because look what he says Allah says فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ both of them when they ate from the tree okay what happened? Who's, what, what did they, what did they, what, what's happening at this particular moment that Adam and Hawa are doing? They're going against the hukum of Allah. They're going against the hukum of Allah. What did that affect? Allah didn't say awratuhuma. Sawa. Some of them fasirin, they say this, the reason why Allah used the word sawa. Sawa means something that will harm another person. Because when the aura of a person comes, it's a harm for the people's hearts. When a woman unveils herself, it's a so'a. She's harming the iman and the qulub of the mu'mineen. Are you with me? But what I want from this is that, what I want from this ayah is that, tadabbur, we have to analyze it and look at it properly, right? What's the ayah telling us? That them going against the command of Allah had actually physically affected their khalq. It physically, that their aura showed. And it's sad, wallahi, that there are our sisters with this feminist and women's rights, they've been fooled to think that taking off their clothes is a form of liberation. And this is something Allah wa ta'ala was punishing Adam and Hawa with. There was a punishment for Adam and Hawa. But what is that? What was it that Iblis wanted? Pay attention. That's what he wanted. He wanted to physically harm them. He wanted to do something to their khalq because that's the enemy that he has. He hates your khalq. Are you with me? <coughs> so he can do that with what? Some of you might think to yourself, how did you come to this conclusion? Okay, Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, brothers, pay attention to this. وَمَنْ يَتَّخِلِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ قُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Pay attention to this. Allah says to us, Iblis is saying this, وَلَا أُضِلَّنَّهُمْ I'm going to misguide them. وَلَا أُمَنِّيَنَّهُمْ I'm going to place false hopes in their hearts. وَلَا أَمُرَنَّهُمْ I'm going to command them everything that's bad. فَلَا يُبَتِّكُونَ الْأَذَانَ الْأَعْمَ وَلَا آمُرَنَّهُمْ And I'm also going to command them and again فَلَا يُغَيِّرُونَ They're going to change and they're going to change خَلْقَ اللَّهِ The creation of Allah They're going to change themselves <laughs> Who say that? He himself is saying that with his own mouth So this is what Iblis is admitting to Are you there? But he has to take a step in he has, There's a step in stone that he has to take Look what Allah said in another ayah just the tabur of the Quran. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what did he say? Alam tara ila alladheena yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik yuriduna an yatahakamu ila al-tawuti wa qad umiru an yakfuru bih wa yuridu shaytanu an yudillahum dalalan ba'idah. So look what Iblis alayhi, Allah is telling us in this verse. Look what Allah is telling us in this verse. He says, Alam tara, Muhammad, do you not see? Ila alladheena to the ones who said to you, we believe in you. Not only do we believe in you, and we also believe in that which has been sent on you. And that which has been sent to those who have come before you. We believe in everything. Sah? But what are they doing? They are going to. They are looking for ideologies like feminism to judge them. And they were told to disbelieve in these kind of beliefs. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ بَالشَّيْطَانُ وَنْسْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا But shaytan wants to misguide them and click out misguidance. So we've now found out that the two directions that shaytan is going to, the ultimate goal is the khalq. That's where he's heading to. But the way he can do that is for you to go against Allah's ahkam, what has been said on the Prophet. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُ إِلَى الطَّاغُوتِ He will say to his sister, you've been oppressed. Ta'awut is kullu ma yu'ubida min dunila. Everything that's worshipped besides Allah. This is an ideology that has been pumped and it's been what? 
ولذلك I was pondering on the verse قوله تعالى and لا شك feminism enters this verse which is قوله تعالى the statement of Allah which Allah says سبحانه وتعالى قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله this is exactly they taken each other's رب من دون الله besides Allah تبارك وتعالى what does the رب mean the hadith of Hadi ibn Hatim what did the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام say اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله what was it يحللون محل الله محرم الله حلالا حرام is taken from a different source other than the kitab and the sunnah what is your right and what isn't your rights what you can do what you can't do is being taken from where it's taken from other sources. Are you with me? <coughs> that particular ayah, what did it say? بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَإِن تَوَلُّوا If you turn away, فَقُولُوا اشْهَدْ بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ What's the ta'rif of Islam? Al-Islamu? Al-Istislamu lillahi bil-tawheed. Wal-inqiyadi lahu? Wal-inqiyadi lahu bil-ta'a. Wal-bara'atu min al-shirki wa ahli. That's how the ta'rif of Islam. فَقُولُوا اشْهَدْ what is a Muslim? What's the job of the Muslim? He's a, a Muslim is the one who surrenders to the ahkam of Allah unrestrictedly. That we're Muslims. How is he a Muslim? He's a Muslim by surrendering with Tawheed. Every single thing which Allah Taala told him to do. Okay, sabi'na wa ata'na. Are you there? <coughs> My beloved brothers and sisters, anybody who chooses not to take the command of Allah, the ahkam of Allah, is going to physically affect him. Oh, yes, it will. Didn't Allah say in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى The reason is because you turned away, Allah says in this particular verse, anyone who turns away from what? مَنْ عَرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ You're going to live a very hard life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى The day of judgment you're going to come blind, dumb and deaf. Brothers and sisters, have you not seen those people who live depressed, anxieties? Huh? Just recently I was... Uh, looking at one of the YouTubers, he goes, I don't even know my purpose in life anymore. I don't know why I live. I don't know why I live. I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Why is he here? Because the reason why he doesn't know why he lives, the reason why he feels suicidal, the reason why he wants to kill himself is because the ahkam and the khalq are in correlation. Your body is, is made in a particular way. Are you there? Have you guys, do you guys remember the old Cas Casio watches? Called Casio, right? They tell you how many meters down you can go into the water, right? It tells you 100 meters, 50 meters. You remember, right? I mean, it's a lot old school. Ah, it gives you, it tells you exactly how many meters you can go down. If you actually go below that and water goes in or something happens to it, the pressure, can you go back to Casio and say, look, bro, look what's happening with your thing? Can you? Everything is made in a particular way. If you try to do it in other than the way it was made, does that make sense? When you buy a clock, when you buy a fridge, when you buy a washing machine, a microwave, there's always a manual guide that comes with it. The man who made it, made the manual guide in accordance, it's all in accordance to the making of it, right? And so if this manual guide is not followed, and something does happen to it, your guarantee does not cover it. Cover it. Sorry? Does it cover it? Who's to be blamed? You are to be blamed. Because you went against the essence and the way that this thing was made. So why do you think as a human being that you're different in any way, form or shape? Sahih? There's no difference, brothers and sisters. Are you there? There's no difference. ولذلك إسحاق بن راهويا زمن عبد البر بروتين في كتاب التمهيد. He says وقد أجمع المسلمون على أن من سب الله عز وجل أو سب رسوله أو دفع شيئا مما أنزل الله تعالى أو قتل نبيا من أنبياء الله تعالى أنه كافر بذلك وإن كان مقرا لكل ما أنزل الله. Ibn, Ibn Ishaq ibn Rahuya, who's, of, who's a contemporary of who? Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, he's of the caliber of Shafi'i. He's older than Ahmed al-Muhammad. 
but he met Ahmed. It's Haq ibn Rahuya brought a consensus that two Muslims don't dispute, which is what? Anyone who insults Allah, or sabba Rasulahu, or insults the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa do atheists not insult, uh, sorry, do feminists not insult the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? How can you attribute yourself to a group of people who are calling the Prophet a, a misogynist, sah? Huh? Who are calling the Prophet a, a misogynist, insulting him alayhi salatu wasalam, and also all other filthy things? Or even you are saying, I have to look, isn't this an insult? I have to look for my right in other than the kalam of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam in the Quran and Sunnah. As though the whole religion of Islam hasn't come to give you your rights and your haq and your hukuk. So anybody who insults the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or dafa'a or he repels and he says these rulings that the man inherits more than the woman ah for me it's not for me ah, I don't take that or dafa'a shay'an mimma anzal Allah ta'ala he repels and he ignores and just refuses anything which has been sent on Allah ta'ala wa ta'ala or he kills a prophet from the prophets of Allah أَنَّهُ كَافِرٌ بِذَلِكَ He becomes a kafir just because of that. Look what he says. وَإِنْ كَانَ مُقِرًّا بِكُلِّ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Even if he believes in everything which has been sent down. He says, I believe in it. I know it's Allah said this, but I'm not going to do it. In car he does on it. And he does ju'ud of it. That person becomes, becomes a kafirun. Very dangerous. That was the first point of my lecture, inshaAllah ta'ala. That was a muqaddimah, ta'silat, that I wanted to bring to each and every one. And the topic, as I said to you, is a very big and a vast topic. It can, it can be dealt with from many angles. But that is a very important point. So what do we conclude from that muqaddimah? Or that, 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 that particular point? What we do conclude from that is that the khalq and the sharia are in accordance to one another. And if you want to live a good life, if you want your heart to be good, you have to what? You have to observe the Sharia, that as, so it doesn't affect your what? Khalq. Wallahi, if you look at people today, what are they running from? If you ask feminists, what are they saying to you? I no man can tell me what to do, sah? That's what they're saying, right? It's funny, other women are telling her what to do. But ala kulli hal, ala kulli hal, every creation, take this qa'idah, memorize it, every creation, or oh, every ch every children of the children of Adam alayhi salam. Every children of Adam, every child of the ch from the children of Adam, are you with me? Are slaves for a master. Are slaves for a master. People differ in terms of who that master is. There's no one who's out of the the shackles of slavery. We're all slaves. But the believers, their master is Allah. Whereas those feminists and others, their master is their nafs of shaytan. Ibn al-Qayyim summarized that in his what? In his Nuniyyah. He says, Harabu min al-riqqi alladhi khuliqu lahu fabulu bi riqqi al-nafsi wa shaytani They ran away from servitude to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Fabulu, they got tested with servitude to their own nafs and shaytan. And when you become a slave to your nafs and shaytan, what did Allah wa ta'ala tell us? What did Allah tell us? That shaytan wants to physically hurt you. What does Allah say? Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladheena yattabi'oona ash-shahawati an tamilu maylan azeema. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Look at Allah say, يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah, First Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah wants to take your repentance. Allah wants to eradicate every mistake that you've done. Allah wants to forgive you. وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ But the ones who have fallen their whims and desires, which is your nafs and shaytan, what do they want from you? And تَمِيلُ مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا They want you to divert. They want you to go off track. They just want you to go off track fully. Then Allah, look what he said to you. وَيُرِيدُ وَيُرِيدُ and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ He wants to make matters easy for you. Then look what he says to you straight after that. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِفًا You've been created weak. Look at the shara' is always related with what? Your khalq, your creating. The only one who's going to observe you as a human and observe your essence 
and make sure that the ahkam and the rules that he passes are in correlation and in tact with your khalq is Allah. Look what he says. I do not burden a soul more than that which can carry. He's observing that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me? So it, the matter is, Oh, feminists. Are you guys the ones who know or does Allah know? Subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the question we ask them. Do you know more or does Allah know? Subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, inshallah ta'ala, I've tackled, tackled that point and I've spoken about it. And I thoughts just keep coming to my mind. But I, there's another point that I did want to mention, which is if you become a slave for Allah wa ta'ala, who's your, who's your master? What did I say you're going to live? A good life. Good life. And you do see those people who don't have. Just because they follow the rulings of Allah and the legislations of Allah, they don't even have much money. They're poor. But what are they? So happy. Are you with me? What did the Prophet say in the hadith? Man ja'ala dunya akbar hammihi. Anyone who makes the dunya his whole aim and objective in life, the ultimate goal. Ja'ala Allahu al faqra bayna ayunihi. Allah places poverty right in front of your eyes. You are consistently just poor. And if you've not seen those people who work 9 to 5, 9 to 6, or 9 to 9, subhanAllah, you see, back to front, they've got so much money, you're looking at his account, look how many zeros are there. But Adalik is still worried, he's still stressed. The reason is because, the reason is because, you as a person, you as an individual, your creation, if it's not fed with the, uh, the Sharia, your body, you can try to feed anything else with it. Money, women, this, that. You can try drugs, but it will always harm you physically. <laughs> the Sharia is the only thing that even if you're physically suffering, as long as you're holding on to it, you'll just be smiling and you'll be laughing. You will what? Well, that Ibn al-Qayyim says, Ibn al-Qayyim says, there are two things, two things, two things, that mentally, mentally, and the heart, and the heart, it grows the heart and it nurtures the heart. And the person, because of that, won't suffer if he comes with. What are they? He says, they are what? Istiqamatul qalb, that the heart becomes steadfast. And that the food, you're smiling, even at the time when you're hungry, you're poor, you're suffering. What is it? He says, Muhabbatullah. the first one is loving Allah. Loving who? Loving Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Are you there? The second one is humiliating for your, yourself for Allah Taala, which is kamalu, kamalu al khudu' wa dhul, humiliating yourself completely for Him Subhanahu wa Taala. The heart, ikhwani and akhawati, my beloved brothers and sisters, what does it find from this? Kamalu al dhul ma'a kamalu al mahabba, complete love with complete humiliation. What does it find? What does it equal? Complete humiliation and complete love. What does it result to? Ta'zim. Both of them equal. So, if you take Complete love, and you plus it to complete humiliation, it equals what? Ta'zim. That's what comes out of it. Ta'zim is actually what complete love with complete? Complete love, pay attention, complete love with complete humiliation gives birth to, or results to what? Ta'zim. You see that person will honor the evidences that are brought to them. Submission to the ahkam of Allah wa ta'ala. Then he's going to be a person who, when he's told, when he's told, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Just like you had no choice in your creation, you also become, a, you agree and you acknowledge that you have no choice in the ahkam that are passed by Allah wa ta'ala. You never question him. You never question him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you there? That's what Allah said in the, in the Quran. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى, إذا قضى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ They have no choice. When Allah and His Messenger pass a ruling, the believer knows he has no choice in this issue. Just like he had no choice in what? The creation. Are you there? Now, inshaAllah ta'ala, my beloved brothers and sisters, I'm going to take you guys to the second point of my lecture, or the reminder, or the topic, is that Islam honored women. Takrimul Islam lil mar'a. Islam honored the women. And I've divided the way Islam honored the women into, into three stages. And this is a summary, summary. I can't go through the whole topic. Just summary, khulasa. And that is, 
ثلاث مراحل three stages Islam only the women the first one is في الصغر when they're young when they're born Islam only them as you all know and are aware of that before Islam women were buried alive Islam liberated this concept from them this evil practice Islam fought against it when the West weren't in existence are you with me? and they were still practicing it themselves Islam came and it stopped this evil practice that's why Allah says in the Quran وَإِذَا بُشِّرْ أَحَدُونَ بِالْأُنْتَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ أَيُمْسِكُهُ عَلَى هُونٍ أَمْ يَدُسُّهُ فِي التُرَابِ أَلَا سَأَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ The minute a man is given a glad tidings of a girl, he starts worrying. His face becomes darkened and black. He's like, how am I going to face the community? Tell the community that my wife just gave birth to a girl. What did Islam do, brothers and sisters? It fought against this evil practice. Now, I was one time discussing a concept, this, this issue with a fem feminist woman. And she said to me, oh, so you actually think this is honouring a woman? By not burying her. So you're going to tell me that you've honoured me by not burying me. So she said to me. Huh? Alhamdulillah, Allah wa ta'ala, that day, when she said that to me, subhanAllah, I just remember, remember the hadith. I said, no, it didn't. It connected a reward to raising that girl until she reaches age of puberty. No other. In the system in this country that we have, the income, the income support they give you or the welfare that they give or the support for a disabled girl or a disabled son if you have. If you have a child, right, a boy, is it the same or is it different? It's the same. There's no difference. If it's a girl or a boy, it's the same. Islam has given uniquely girl a reward that it hasn't given the boy. If you raise a girl, look what the Prophet ﷺ said. The Hadith Sahih Muslim in Hadith Anas ibn Malik. Man ala jariyatayni hatta tablugha. Anybody who raises, nurtures two girls. حَتَّى تَبْلُغَ Until they reach the age of puberty جَاءَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He will come the day of judgment أَنَا وَهُوَ Me and him are like this, the Prophet said وَضَمَّ أَصَابِعَهُ He and I are like this in Jannah The Prophet did this عليه الصلاة والسلام Pay attention to this So it's not just the fact that she's not buried alive But it's the fact that don't just bury her alive Nurture her and raise her good and I promise you, you and I are going to be like this in paradise. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? That's when she was young. That was the first stage. How? Look how Islam honoured her. Are you there? The second stage to show you that Islam honoured her is when she gets married. The father who's raising his daughter, he passes her over to, or she gets married to what? She gets married to what? A man. He's like, he's letting his daughter go now. Another man's going to get married. Islam then said to the father, okay, your, 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 your time is, is over. Now she's got married. Okay, she's moved on, right? Then Islam started to address the men that are married to her. Now, I want you to look at not just what the Prophet said, but look where he said it and how he said it. And what circumstances he said it. Hajjatul Wada' is where he said this. Hajjatul Wada' was the final sermon of the Prophet. This was the time when the Prophet ﷺ had no gathering like it, before nor after. Are you with me? And you all know a gathering like that, which you know is not going to last for long. And you, you have to address many topics. The Prophet والسلام, he designated a portion of it to speak about the women to be remembered. Look what he said. He said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِيَدْ Allah تَعَالَى Men, fear Allah. فِي النِّسَاءِ In the matters regarding to women. Fear Allah in the affairs of the women. You took them with a man of Allah Allah's permission and that which Allah entrusted you with. And you be, the private part became permissible for you based on the word of Allah Taala. So the Sharia also honored her as a wife. Honored her as a wife. And that's still, and also honored her as a mother. Also honored her as a mother. Look what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari and Hadith Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, a man came to him and he said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam, "Man ahqu al-nasi bi husn al-sahabati? Who is who is who? Which person has the most rights on me? Who is the per, 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 person who is most befitting for me to treat them the best?" The Prophet said, Ummuk. Then the companion said, Who after that? Oh, Messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet said, Your mother. 
He said, who after that, O Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet said on the third time, your mother. Two, three times the Prophet said, your mother. On the, after that, the man, goes, the man said to the Prophet, and who after that, O Messenger of Allah? And then the Prophet said to him, your father. Rather, it has been transmitted from the Prophet وسلم, that he said, Al-Jannah tahta aqdami ummahat. That Jannah lies between the feet of your mother. Jannah, paradise, it lies between the feet of your mother. Are you with me? Are you with me? And in the Quran, my beloved brothers and sisters, there is not a place, there is not a place in the Quran, or, sorry, there is no a chapter in the Quran which was named after the men. Is there? Is there a chapter in the Quran that you have that's named after a, a um, men, chapter of men? No. But you have, a, have you got a chapter in the surah in the Quran that says women? We've got two. We've got two surahs in the Quran that, are, um, that mention women. One is the surah of Nisa that every one of us know. And the other one is known as a Nisa al-Sughra, as the scholars call it. A Nisa al-Sughra, the one called Nisa al-Kubra, which is the one uh, surah of Nisa that we call it. The next one is, is which is which is known as an Nisa al-Sura, which is Surah Al-Talaq, designated and specifically just talks about their affairs. So Islam honored them to actually speak about them and name them two chapters of the Quran. The third stage, which Islam honored the woman, is after she gets divorced. After she gets divorced, whether she gets divorced or she gets widowed. Uh, look at the Sharia, I remembered her. Bukhari narrated in his Sahih bin Hadith Abi Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-sa'i ala al-armalati wal-miskini kal-mujahidi fi sabili Allah aw al-qa'im al-layl as-sa'im al-nahar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who stands up in the support and aiding of the widows, the divorcees, wal-miskin and the poor, kal-mujahidi fi sabili Allah. He's like the one who's fighting the cause of Allah. Or he's like the one who's praying all night. Al-Sa'imun Nahari and he's fasting. And he's fasting all day. So the person who goes and he makes it his life to help the divorcees financially, helps them and he designated whatever form of help it is, but he helps them. The Prophet told us it's like jihad fi sabilillah. Is it, do you guys know how the station of a jihad mujahid fi sabilillah? That's the station that's given to them. The person who does that. Not only that, he's like a person who's prayed all night, Qiyamul Layl. And a person who's fasting all day. It's equal to that station. Just by helping a woman who's divorced or widowed. Naam, one woman, woman. Just an armala, just one woman who helps a divorcee or widow. Bukhari narrated in his Sahih al-Hadith Abu Hurairah. Those three stages is a stage that the woman goes through. Sahih? Each stage the Sharia has given her something that even the men weren't given. Not only that, as you all are aware of, at the time of the Prophet they were slaves, right? Did Islam bring slavery? No. Islam did not bring slavery. Islam came at a time when slavery was practiced. Are you with me? And Islam got rid of and abolished, huh? and got rid of, uh, what do you call it, the practicing of slavery and how it was done. So it made sure, Islam made sure that it made channels in which slavery can be, it can be, it can be what? It, it, people can free their slaves, get rid of their slaves. The Prophet look at this, every time you do this, what does the Sharia tell you? Free, free a slave, free a slave, free a slave, free a slave, sahih. There's a risala written on how many times no source of textual evidences that have come, textual evidence that have come, to free the slave. More than 20 different ahkam, kafarat, expiations in the sharia has been stipulated to it to free a slave. Are you there? Anyways, a slave girl will come to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In kanatil, Anas ibn Barak says, Sahih al-Bukhari. In kanatil amatu min ima'il madinati, a slave girl from the slave girls of Medina will come لَتَأْخُذُ بِيَدِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم And she'll take the Prophet by the hand. فَتَنْطَلِقُ بِهِ حَيْثُ شَعَتْ And she'll take him wherever she wishes. A slave girl will take the Prophet by the hand and she will take him to the city of Medina and she would use the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in all of her things that she needs. She would say, oh, so could you do this for me? She, what would she use? He, he, she would use him, صلى الله عليه وسلم, reputation. 
Because people do things for the Prophet that she needs and she will make the Prophet say, Ya Rasulullah, can you get this for me? She will make him physically help her, alayhi salatu wasalam. I ask you by Allah, a man this noble, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, do we have anyone like him today who, from the leaders who would actually go, huh? who would do that, go, and get, and you would all know where the station a slave is placed in the community. La shakka wa la rayb, they put her down in the low, down. Ba'adhalika Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wouldn't. He wouldn't. And he would, mashallah, observe her needs and what she wants. She'll take him by the hand. And he's the leader. He's a commander. He's a messenger of Allah. Ba'adhalika, he would walk with her in the city of Medina and she would do what she wants from him. Until she says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I've got, got what I wanted. Does that show... So if our, my beloved sisters, who want to look for their rights and fight against the cultural practices that are, go against the religion, make sure that what you're looking for, your rights, is taken from the Nusus al the textual evidences. Don't ex exceed your limits. What's not, what's not your rights, don't try to take it as your rights. Don't ask for what's not your rights. And also don't accept, don't accept it from anybody. A rights that Allah gave you, don't let anyone strip it from you. It's the haqq of Allah which he gave to you. But wallahi, if you suffice yourself, my beloved brothers and sisters, if you suffice yourself with the rights that Allah has given you, that's enough for you. And you wouldn't get anything better than it. You wouldn't get anything better than it. Inshallah ta'ala, I conclude. Uh, as I said, this was a summary. It's just a khulasa. It's just bullet points. It's not really a, a detailed explanation or detailed... Anything which I said that was wrong or a mistake is for me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu